Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to speak your word, to share your word. Thank you for everyone that is sitting here today, Lord God. And I thank you for the new things that are coming to all of us. Father, I thank you because we know, Lord God, that you're always in control. That regardless of how circumstances may arise or what may happen around us, you're always in control. We can trust you. We, we put our trust in you, our lives in you. We put absolutely everything in your hands. And we pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit may give us wisdom today, that the spirit of revelation and truth may come upon all of us, opening our hearts, opening our minds, that we may hear, Lord God, and see all that you have for us in this day, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. So good to have you here as well. It is a big blessing always to get together. And I want you to know that when we get together, amazing things happen. You know, not only God loves, God's love begins to flow through us, through each and every one of us, but also we find that encouragement that we need sometimes. You know, sometimes we may come a little bit down, we may come maybe a little bit worried, we may come a little bit maybe stressed out, and we hear someone that comes and says, it's going to be okay. Or maybe we get a tap in the back or a hug or a God bless you, and that cheers us up. And I want you to understand that that's why God created the body, so that we can depend on one another, we can trust one another, we can spend time with each other, and realizing that God flows through each and every one of us towards everyone else. And we just have to say, Lord, give me more of you so I can give more of what you've given me to the people around us. And if we do that, believe me, you will see an increase of the love of God in your life. You will see an increase of his peace, of his joy, of the giftings that he's given you. You will see an increase of all the things because you're managing what he's given you. You're giving it away to those that are in need, those that are hungry, those that are looking for what you have. Amen? So, God bless you guys. So, today we're going to talk about something again that I do believe is very important for all of us. I have some, maybe some news that I want to share with you, some insight into what God is leading us to do as a congregation. I want to share with you some prophetic words that I do believe God has revealed to me uh, for this year that, uh, that is coming. I do want to uh, speak about maybe the strategy or the focus that God wants us to begin to embrace and begin to walk under. And part of that includes many changes, of course. Part of that includes, you know, thinking in a different way, emphasizing certain things in a different way so that we can all be in the same mindset and be able to carry out the instructions or the guidance or, you know, the strategy that God has given to us as a congregation, as his body, so that we can see his promises come to pass and see what is actually um, taking place in our lives and in our midst, you know? So having said that, I'm going to ask uh, uh, James if you can put the graphic on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the screen, please. You know, this graphic is very uh, interesting. And I want to dissect it a little bit and explain to you so we can understand what this whole message is going to be about. And if you see this, this is something that maybe you've heard me say a lot, but the first thing that you see is you see the word I go. And the interpretation of this word or this meaning or the initials are really international gospel outreach. If you know a little bit of the history of Verbo, Verbo began in California, oh sorry, the out of a church called Gospel Outreach in California many years ago, we're talking maybe 50, 60 years ago, a group of hippies or uh, missionaries went to Guatemala in 1976. Out of that, Verbo was born. Verbo came to Guatemala, not as Verbo, but as Gospel Outreach. That was the name that Verbo had at that time on the church. The missionaries that were going down, they began to build homes because of the earthquake that was down there. They began to rebuild the city and so forth. And before they knew it, these, uh, I guess, missionaries from the U.S. found themselves starting a church. And they named this church Verbo, which means the Word of God. And out of that, many churches began to 
arise. People began to be drawn to them. The church began to grow in Guatemala City. And then before you know it, we were sending missionaries all over the world to, you know, uh, Canada, U.S., you know, Brazil, Argentina, you name it, Nicaragua, Spain, all over the world. And we are the fruit of that. But as we've come to Canada, you know, now it's going to be about 29 years, if I'm not mistaken, that we'll be fulfilling here in May. We have the task at hand to be able to not only bring the gospel to this nation, but to the cultures also that are represented in this nation. And we know that Canada is a very multicultural nation. We know that Canada is a nation that has pretty much the whole world in it, especially Toronto, that we can find every culture, every nation being represented in this amazing city that we have called Toronto, right? Now, what has happened over the years is that, yes, we started as a Spanish ministry. We started preaching the word of God to the Spanish community. And as you know, Ramon was the one that came with his family. Ramon was able to hear the voice of the God, listen to it, carry out the mission that God had given to him, came to Canada as a missionary. He established, again, uh, people in place. And today we have four churches in Canada, one in Vancouver, Montreal, Mississauga, and here in Toronto, right? We are the only ones that are English-speaking church because our vision has always been, from the very beginning, it has never changed, to reach the Anglo-speaking community and to the world. And the only way that we can reach the world is when we do it in the language of English. In other words, by using English is that we're able to appeal or uh, get our message across to many other cultures because English is, you know, an international language that everybody speaks or in every nation is spoken as well, you know, as a second language or, or you know, as instructed in the schools. But we know that in Spanish, we can only do so much. That's why you see verbals all over Latin America from, you know, I guess from Canada all the way to Argentina. But unfortunately, what happens is that we are limited in our reach when we are thinking still like with a, either a Hispanic mentality or a Spanish-speaking mentality. And we need to understand that God is opening up the nations to us. Here in Canada, God wants us to reach all the nations. And what a better place to have Toronto as a platform to send out people to all the nations to establish churches, to establish ministries, to send out missionaries to do the work of God, to maybe establish schools, help the orphans, the, the widows, those people that are in need, the poor, and so forth. And we have the potential to do so here. So our task, our vision has always been and will always be the nations. And we must do that. And that's why as we've come together in council, in prayer, seeking the Lord, that's why as we've come together asking God for a strategy, we do feel that we need to change the name of the church. Now, we're not going to change the name of the church when it comes to the government. We're still going to operate under verbal Christian ministries. But the image that we will have, the website that we will have, will change names for the purpose of reaching out all of the cultures. And this is going to be our new name, International Gospel Outreach. Come on, give glory to God. Again, I want to remind you that we're still going to operate as Verbal Christian Ministries as our legal name here in Canada. You know, the receipts will be given under Verbal Christian Ministries. The donations will be given to Verbal Christian Ministries. But the name that we will use, that people will begin to know us for, will be International Gospel Outreach. Right? The name speaks for itself. What is the purpose? We got to reach the nations with the gospel and disciple the nations. And if you grab the first letters of each word, you get the word I go. In other words, means action. A verbal means action. Verbal means the word of God. Verbal means Jesus, you know, coming alive. He is the word of God. He's the living word of God. And I go represents the same thing that we 
as the body of Christ, we put into action what God has given us or told us to do, what Jesus commanded us to do. What did he command us to do? He says, go and make disciples of the nations, right? Didn't he say that? Go. So I want to explain to you what the whole thing is going to be about or how our perspective is going to have to change if we want to embrace this new name or this new identity when it comes to the way that we do things. And we have a slogan. The slogan is going to be, where are you going with the gospel today? In other words, we as Christians must understand that we are living, you know, stones, that we are living creatures or human beings that have been called by God to carry out the impossible, which is to what disciple the nations. And if we are not in that mindset, the mindset of going and reaching out to the people around us, if we're not in the mindset of going and doing the things that God commanded us to do, if we're not in the mindset of going out and praying for the sick, helping the poor, reaching out to the lost, ministering to the brokenhearted, raising out the dead, if we're not in the mindset that it is up to me, my responsibility to go out and do and be the church, we will never see this nation change. We will never see the world change. Why? Because Jesus already told us what to do. He said, go do this stuff. But unfortunately, we have fallen into a religious mindset. When I mean we, I'm talking about the body of Christ as a general thing. That somehow we come with a mentality with those that maybe were from a Catholic background coming into maybe a Christian church. Where you come, you sit down, you listen to a good message, it touches your heart, you cry a little bit, you're a good Christian, and you go home and you do it again the next week. No. It is about why did I do, where did I take, or where am I going with the gospel today? Not tomorrow, now, today. What am I going to do today with what has been given to me? Because did you know that the gospel means good news? Have you given good news to someone today? Have you told them that it's going to be okay, that God is in control? Have you told them that the marriage is going to be okay? Have you told them and given them hope that it doesn't matter how horrible the sickness may be, what situation you may be going through, or what circumstance you may find yourself in, that there is hope, there is good news for you, that Jesus Christ has come and has paid for everything so that we can obtain everything. So we'll begin to use the slogan is, where are you going with the gospel today? So I'm asking you today, Stephen, Nick, Eduardo, Juan, Fabiola, Adriana, Reinhardt, Corey, where are you going with the gospel today? Because Jesus says, go and make disciples. The first thing we have to understand that we must grab that part of our identity. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. We must make ourselves available to be taught, to understand, to have a shift in mindset that it is my responsibility, the responsibility of the body of Christ, the church as a whole, not as an institution, to carry out this mission. And that's why I put Chris and Queen as an example. I use as well Yearly as an example. They had the initiative to do what? To do what was God, what God was put in their heart. What did God put in their heart? To go to the streets and help out the homeless. To reach out those that have lost maybe hope or those that find themselves broken on the inside. They were the ones that decided, you know what? I can do this. And we say, yes, you can do this because Jesus Christ commanded us to do it, but you need help. So we're going to help you. How are we going to help you? We're going to collect some, some items for you, some jackets, some food, some money, whatever it is you need so that you can do, go and do the stuff that's in your heart so that you can go. Same thing with you. And take the gospel wherever God is leading you to go. Same thing with Yerli. Yearly had in your heart, I got to do something for Venezuela. How can I be an instrument to help Venezuela? She had the initiative. She started doing it on her own. And we said, Yearly, we want to help you help Venezuela. So she is going with the gospel to those that are in need. Chris, uh, Queen are going with the gospel today, tonight, on New Year's Eve, all the time to those that are in need. So the question is, where are you taking the gospel with you today? Did you tell someone 
that there's going to be okay? Did you give him hope today? Did you tell him that Jesus Christ is the only way, that he's alive, that he's the truth? Did you tell him there's, there's salvation in that name? Did you tell him something? You know what? This is something that we can do anyway. Some people say, well, you know what? Why don't we do something here as a church? We can do all kinds of things. But unfortunately, the mindset has always been, if the pastor does it, then we do it. If the church does it, then we all come and do it. But I want to knock these four walls down. I want to knock them down and flip them off the way and show you that all of there is a great field that God has given us to gather the harvest. What's in your heart? What is that burden that drives you, that says, I want to do something? I want to do something for God. I don't know what it is. Or maybe you do know what it is. Maybe you feel that you need to go and begin to volunteer in a soup kitchen and help the poor in the community. Well, go do it. Take the gospel there. Maybe you feel, you know what? I don't have many giftings. I don't have many resources. But I feel that I need to go around my block and begin to pray for the salvation of the whole entire block. Go and do it. Take the gospel. Go begin to pray for people. Begin to pray for the household so that people will come and hear the message of the gospel. Maybe they will be drawn to you. Maybe you tell me, right now, I don't know what to do. Well, invite your friends over for a barbecue and tell them your story. Take the gospel with you today. You know, this world, as you know it, keeps getting worse and worse. We have uh, almost rumors of wars now with the, you know, the U.S. You know, knocking down one of the leaders of Iran. And there's talks now and there's turbulence taking place. And some people are saying this is going to lead to a third world war. And, and we're going to go into, into, into war and this and that and so forth. We see the economic system that is you know, unstable in many different ways. Many people say this, say that. And there's a lot of uncertainty all the time. But now even more, we see even you know, perversion and immorality advance so fast that you know we can see that the agenda that is moving forward to indoctrinate our children against the principles that God has given us through his word and we can see this whole world is changing fast but the, the key is that this world doesn't need more Christians this world does not need more Christians this world needs disciples that can transform a nation, that can transform families, that can teach families the ways of God, that can teach families the principles that God has given us in this word. This world needs Jesus. It does not need more Christians. It needs Jesus. Disciples of Jesus Christ. People that will go out and do the stuff that he commanded us to do. Where are you going with the gospel today? You may say to me, well, Reiner, you know, I'm a very shy person. Well, start praying then. Use your giftings. What is your gifting? Maybe your gifting is cooking. Well, invite people over. Invite them for dinner. Tell them your story. But it's all about action. It's all about going. It's not about being complacent. It's not about being comfortable. It's not about me coming to church and growing and getting all fat and big-headed. No, it's about me using the little bit or the, the much that I may know. I know I'm challenging you today. I know maybe I'm making you feel uncomfortable because you thought, no, I know, man, I just want to come to church and I just want to be a good Christian and I just want to, you know, do my part and I don't want to have to do any of this stuff. No, use the platform that God has given you. Let's read some scriptures. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. This is the scripture that we use as all this. It says like this, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. And make disciples of the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know how many Christians we have that are there 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and they're still not making disciples of anybody? They're not even teaching their own children? It says by now, the Bible tells us that by now we should be teachers of the word. We should be teaching others. That's what he says. Make disciples and teach them. Teach them to observe, to practice, to keep in their hearts my ways, his word, his principles. 
That is how we become great in God's kingdom. When we begin to serve others and when we begin to teach others. You want to be great in God's kingdom? Then we must start there. And why serving? Because when you serve, God begins to transform you. God begins to change you. God begins to shape you up. God begins to, you know, to, to begin to take all the maybe rough patches that we all have and it begins to shape you in such a way that eventually he will use you to impact the nation. But you have to start somewhere. A lot of people say, you know what, I want to be a preacher. I want to be this, I want to, but they don't want to go through the process. The point is, do we let him do and teach us and shape us and mold us? Many people are not looking to be discipled. Many people have no idea they need to be discipled. Disciple for what? To go out. I'm not saying to go to the streets necessarily. No, to go wherever that platform may be and to make disciples. That's what he said to his, first of all, you know, he said to his 12 disciples, go, you know, go. Cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead. Wherever you enter, wherever house you enter to, go with it, declare your peace. Eat whatever this they eat, you know, place before you and declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When was the last time that you said that in someone's home? When was the last time that you said peace into your home? When was the last time they were intentional about saying, you know what, that person needs Jesus because he's going through turbulence. That person needs Jesus because they're being oppressed with depression, with anxiety. That person needs Jesus because their whole household is falling apart. That person needs Jesus because they've lost hope. Who's going to go? You. You are going to go. You must go. You must take the gospel with you. Wake up. Wake up. Mark 16, verse 14 to 16, again, something similar says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat on the table, this is after Jesus had died, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had seen risen. risen. And he said to them, Go into all the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. To every creature. Baptize them. Do you believe the words that Jesus Christ is saying here? Do you believe that if he's sending you to do something, it's because he's equipped you to do so? Do you believe that he's saying, go do this, is because his spirit is within you to give you the power to accomplish that which you're being sent to do? Do you believe that when he says, all power and all authority is given to me, and now I give it to you, go and do this stuff, do you believe that or are you waiting for something to happen? Are you waiting for Reinhardt to do everything? Are you waiting for Nick to do everything? Are you waiting for Mike to get up and serve us all? Do you believe that inside of you, you have the potential to impact and to change this world through the power of the love of God, through his name, through his word of God? Do you believe that? Many people are saying, how can I change this world? Well, let me tell you, what this world needs is a Jesus Christ. The only thing that can change this world is Jesus Christ. That's why we have this name, I go, you go, we all go, do the commission that is being entrusted to us, which is to make disciples of the nations. It is enough, enough for us to know the word, but we must learn to teach the word of God. You must learn to share your story to the people around you. You must tell everyone what God has done in your life. Make this a priority for this year in your life. 
Let this be something that you desire in your heart that truly, truly you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ because you understand that he's calling you and that this world needs what? Jesus Christ and all of creation as we were talking about yesterday is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. Why? Because this whole world is crying out. It's, it's crying in pain. It is suffering. And yet we have the answer. Christians have the answer. The Word of God is what this world needs. Jesus Christ, the living Word of God. But none of this will happen if the church does not take action. None of this happens if you do not start reaching the people around you. None of this will happen if you do not use your gifts to make an impact in the people that God has brought into your life. None of this will happen if you never share your story with anybody. None of this will happen if you stay sitting there waiting for something to take place in your life. I mean, don't you want to get to heaven? And have the Lord reward you with crowns? Because of the things that He gave you and trusted you to do in this place, in this, on this earth? Don't you want to be great in God's kingdom? Don't you want to reign with Him? Don't you want the promises that He has for you? Let me tell you this. There's a lot of Christians out there today that are in bondage, that are suffering, that are in sickness. There are many things, and I'm not saying that all these is from the enemy, but there's a lot of people out there that do not know the truth. Why? Because the truth has not come into them. They're not living that truth. They're living in defeat. Because a true disciple will grab the Word of God and will practice the Word of God, will put it to practice, will, will make sure that this Word, it becomes part of them. They begin to think that way, they begin to speak that way, and they begin to imitate and carry out the same things that Jesus had asked them to do. That is a true disciple. Someone that changes circumstances. Someone that is intentional about reaching those in the workplace. Someone that says, you know what? My boss needs to know the Lord. I'm going to come and pray every day in the office until he becomes a Christian. You know what? My neighbor is going through this situation. I'm going to go talk to him, invite him over for coffee, and tell him my story. I'm going to invite my friends, and then I'm going to begin to tell them that Jesus Christ loved them. What are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? Don't you understand that the one in you is greater than the one in the world? Don't you understand that you've been given exactly what you need? Disciple the nations. So when we look at this image, if you can put it again, uh, please, James. We see people praying, worshiping outside. If you look over there in the entrance, we have an image of Chris of Yearly doing what they're doing. I told them I want to get a video of you guys. I want to get this because to inspire other people. I want to do this because I need... I need all of us. We all need to understand that it's up to us to do something. Where are you taking the gospel with you today? Mark 16, 17, 18 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will take up serpents if they drink anything deadly, but by no means will hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The signs will follow you if you're moving, if you're going, if you're acting. If you're standing still, waiting for something, nothing will happen in your life. You will never see the Bible come alive before you. But if you're going, if you're sharing, if you're reaching out, 
If you're putting your faith into practice, you will see how the signs and the wonders will begin to come alive and take place in your life. You know, how many times in the homes we see people getting delivered, people getting healed, people giving their life to the Lord, people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. How many times do we see that? We see it all the time. Why? Because we are going. We are being intentional. We are inviting our friends. We're working together as the body of Christ. Who's going to go? Who's going to go to the nations? Who's going to go to Africa? Who's going to go to Asia? Who's going to go to Jamaica? Who's going to go to whatever it is? Who's going to go? One of us has to go. Maybe your calling is not to be a missionary somewhere else, but you can be a missionary in your workplace. Be a missionary in your neighborhood. Be a missionary wherever you are in. Take the gospel with you. Disciples. True disciples. That know the word of God. That can teach the word of God. That can manifest God's kingdom. That know the ways of the Lord. True disciples. That will teach others. To observe all the things that Jesus Christ has taught us. True disciples. We are not tails. We are head. We are supposed to lead others. Men, where are you? The men. The men are complacent. The men are too comfortable. The men do not want commitment with the Lord and take the initiative to lead. To lead your families. To lead this congregation. To lead this community. To lead this city. To lead this nation. Where are the men? Responsibility. You cannot have authority without responsibility. We all want to take charge of our families. We want to call the shots. We want to tell our wives what to do. We want to tell our children what to do. But if we're not responsible, we don't have a right to that authority. Responsible with the things of God. Responsible with what He's entrusted us. Responsible knowing that it is up to me to bring light to my neighborhood because I have Jesus Christ in me. We are the light, the salt of this earth. What good is the salt for if it loses its flavor? It is good to be thrown down and to be trampled on. I don't want to be that. I want to be the salt that goes to preserve the food, the meat, to preserve the values of this society, to preserve the values of the families, to preserve the values of this city, to preserve the values that Jesus Christ has entrusted us, has given to us, the word of God is saying to us. That's why we must stand firm on the Word of God. But how do we do that if we don't take the time to read the Word of God? If we don't take the time to pray enough? If we don't take the time to practice what we know? Again, I use this scripture a lot. lot. Luke 4, verse 16 says like this. So he came to Nazareth when he had been brought up and he's... And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. This is Jesus. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now I'm going to tell you, because he has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. He has sent you to bring sight to the blind. To set the the, the captives free, the oppressed free. To proclaim the good year of the Lord. 
What is it that we want to see? We want to see initiative from your part. We want to see and we want to know what's in your hearts. That's why the homers are such an, a blessing because in the homers we can hear the people, what their, their desires are in their heart. We can hear the ideas that are coming forward. We can hear, guys, why don't we do this? And you begin to work in small teams and you begin to work together to bring the resources to make an impact and to carry out the vision that someone may have to build that relationship or to build that ministry that God is birthing in your heart. What is it that we want to see? We want to see all of you take the initiative, say, what's in your heart? You may tell to me, well, to me are the single mothers. Well, go after the single mothers. Invite one to your house. Tell them your story. You may tell me, to me is people that are already divorced, that are broken on the inside, that are losing hope. But go to them. Maybe to you are those party animals, the ones that have no moral values at all. Well, go to them. Do something. Maybe to you are the people that are in depression. Well, go and tell them the good news. What is in your heart? What is it that you want to do? What is it that God is saying that you must do? Don't wait for someone to do it for you. Carry out yourself. You know that when Ramon and Erlina came to Canada... They came by faith. If someone had told them, yeah, go, there'll be a salary waiting for you over there. You'll have a nice home, a nice car, go and preach the word. It would have been a lot easier. But he believed the word of God that said, go, and I will provide along the way. Go, and I will sustain you. Go and I will feed your children. Go and do my work. Preach my word. We're here because of that. Let me tell you, the objective is not to bring people to church. The objective is to bring people to Christ. Christ will change him and transform him along the way. Christ will put him wherever he wants to put him. If he wants to put him in this church, what a blessing. If he wants to put him somewhere else, what a blessing. We don't do things to be seen. We do things to please our Heavenly Father. Women. Where are the women? Those prayer warriors, those women that will reach other women, those women with great ideas, great initiatives, great talents, where are the women? Why aren't you putting your giftings towards the service of the Lord? Where are the women? Teaching other women, teaching the younger women. Where are the women? We're not here to gather and have a nice meal. And to, get, and to be pampered and to feel good about ourselves because we come and we hear a nice message. Where are those evangelists? Where are those women warriors that will cast out the demons and other women? Where are those women that will go to the hospitals? That will go to the sick? Where are those women that will go and take walks in their neighborhoods and pray for the salvation or the circumstances to change in their neighborhoods? Where are those women That from home, you can raise battles against the enemy. Praying for the church, praying for your families, praying for this nation, praying for this city. Where are the women, those leaders that will lead? Disciples. Disciples. What this world needs. Not more Christians. There's a lot of Christians out there. This world, for some reason, is getting worse and worse and worse. But yet we know the Bible says, when there was much sin, also grace will abound. 
We know that times will get more difficult because Jesus said it will. But he also said that his church will rise up with power. His church is unstoppable. And then even the gates of hell will be able to stop what the church is capable of doing. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Where are you taking the gospel this year? To whom are you to go to? Will you answer the call and say, here I am, Lord, send me. Here, Lord, use me. Remember, it's not about what happens here. It's about what happens on the outside. Here we can all be glorified and feeling this peace and joy, but out there people need it. They need a prophetic word. They need a word of encouragement. They need to see to believe. They need to feel your love, the love that God has given you. They need to see that someone, a stranger, will come and help someone. They need to be inspired and to know that there's still hope. That's why we're working on this. And we feel this is the strategy and the new format that God has given to us. To be able to draw more cultures, draw more people, and draw those that want to be discipled. Do you want to be discipled? Are you making the time to get discipled? Are you paying the price to get discipled? Are you sacrificing to get discipled? Are you making it a priority in your life to get discipled? Or are you like the, the guest of the king who he invited to his feast and they all came up with excuses and said, ah, I just bought a new house. You know what? I got to renovate it. I got to fix the fence. I got to do this. And I, I can't go, God. I'm sorry. I can't go to your dinner. Thank you very much for the invitation, but I'm too busy. Oh, no, 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 no. I got to work on Sundays because I got clients to deal with and I got to do this and I got to do that and I got no time for the Lord. And the evenings I got to work more and I got to prepare for the next day. And we come with all the excuses not to give a day to the Lord. I'm not saying you have to be Sunday. It could be any day. But we make it our priority. Oh, no, 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 no. I got three children. You know what? Within the three children, it's hard for me to, to change them and do this. And I got to take them out to the park and I got to do this. And, and Jesus is like, what about me? What about the invitation I just made you? Oh, I just bought a new car and I got to wash it. What's your excuse? Hmm? What's your excuse? We have no excuse. And if we pass on the greatest invitation that the King of Kings has ever made to us to come and sit at this table, he will simply ask someone else to come and replace our seat. He's not going to wait for us forever. Let this be the year for us to wake up. Let this be the year for us to take action. I want to see you guys come up to me and say, Reiner, I have this in my heart. What can we do? Well, let me tell you what. We're going to equip you. We're going to train you. And we're going to send you out to do that which you feel. And we're going to help you do it. We're going to give you the resources that you need. We're going to do the, the support that you need. But go and do the stuff. Valiant take the kingdom of heaven by force. By force. Yes, there will be challenges. Yes, you're going to be hit down. You're going to be knocked down. You're going to be, you know, uh, going through a lot of things. But yet, God will prevail and he will give you the victory over every circumstance in your life. That's what a disciple is. Someone who doesn't give up. Someone who's not looking for their own interests. Someone is looking out for the interests of the king. Someone that wants to put God's business before their own business. Someone that's concerned 
but the interests of the king and not their own. I know I've already talked a lot. I want to share a couple of prophetic words the Lord has given to me. As I was praying, I've seen a few things over the last few couple of weeks. And I was asking the Lord, Lord, tell me what's happening, what's coming this year. And the Lord would show me a clock. And this clock would begin to tick backwards. And I would ask, Lord, what does this mean? What does this clock mean? And the Lord would give me several things. One, that we will see, particularly for Canada, we will see a regression in politics. We will see a regression in financial, finance, finances. We will see a regression in many areas of this country. Instead of the end things better, they will get worse. We will see that even a lot of people will regress in their faith. A lot of people will give up. A lot of people will simply get cold. And a lot of people will turn away from the Lord. But on the other hand, we will also see the enemy regress. We will see the advancements of the enemy, his agenda. We will see all that the devil has been trying to do to inflict pain, to inflict sickness, to inflict poverty, to inflict you know, bondage on people. We will see that regress and we will see a church rise up. We will see a church rise up with power, with might. We will see a church rise up filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we will see how all this darkness, darkness will begin to regress because God's children will begin to rise up and will begin to speak and declare and to confess and to decree God's word. We will begin to see an advancement of the church here in Canada and around the world. We'll begin to see an advancement of the giftings, the knowledge, the wisdom, the revelation, and people will begin to look upon the church. We will begin to see a boldness, a new boldness that comes into the church that will draw people to stand firm on the principles regardless of the backlash and what is happening. We will begin to see more voices speaking out and being light. We will begin to see His glory begin to shine in this nation. Also, the Lord showed me a storm, a big storm that was brewing up, and this storm eventually began to draw and overtook the entire world. I do feel, again, that something's taking place, something's about to take place, that God is allowing circumstances to be created that this storm will try to engulf the whole world and draw it to it. Exactly what it is, I cannot tell you, but all I can tell you that even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of all these circumstances, God will give peace to us. God will provide for us. God will spare us. God will allow us to be the light. And we will see like never before people crying out to God. We will see like never before people coming down to their knees and crying out for mercy. We will see like never before nations changing. We will see like never before nations declaring that they serve God, that they are under God's laws. We will see like never before the, the, the line being drawn in the sand and nations will take part with God or become enemies of God. It will see very clearly invisible. And God is calling Canada to take a stand. Where do we stand? Where is Canada standing? Canada belongs to, can to God. But God is also going to cause Canada to draw that line in the sand. And to go back, to go back, the people will cry out. The people will be the one to put pressure on the government. 
the people will rise up. And we will see a change from within, starting with the people, and influencing their own government. This year we will see people that you never realized, we never expected to do unbelievable things. Great things for God. And I see how the Holy Spirit comes upon his church and begins to lift people, to raise people. And draw people to them. God wants us to prepare our hearts. God wants us to be ready. God wants us to be on the attack mode. God wants us to be ready to go. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to put this into action? Are you ready to put your faith into practice? Are you ready to let all that comfortness or staleness and to embrace the new that God has for us. Are you ready? Are we ready to go and take the gospel with us everywhere we go? Close your eyes. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, tell me, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? What do you want me to do? Just listen to his voice for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much, Lord God, because we know that it's a new season for us. Just as you spoke through Nick, Lord God, through that word, Confirming. Confirming your promises. Confirming, Lord God, what is to happen, what is to come. Confirming, Lord God, what we ought to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just come. We come to you. And we ask for forgiveness. We ask, Lord God, no more complacency in our lives. We ask the Lord, use me. If you can use me, use me, Lord God, to make a difference in someone's life. To bring hope to someone. To bring change. To bring transformation. Jesus, use me. I give you all of me. I give you my mind. I give you my heart. I give you my, my resources. I give you my family. Jesus, speak through me. Use me, God. Transform my family. Change my heart. Change my mentality. That I may be always going, moving forward. I don't want my life to be the same as last year, Lord God. I want new things in you, God. New revelation, new challenges, new levels, new doors, new people, Lord God. New relationships. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord God, that as we embrace, Lord God, in this new name, Lord God, International Gospel Outreach, that we can begin to identify ourselves with our name, with the identity, Lord God, with the DNA of the ministry that you've given to us. Because, Lord, we know that the fivefold ministry is there to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And, Lord, you have equipped us you have given us an apostolic and a prophetic vision, Lord God. You've given us, Lord God, foundation. You've given us, Lord God, all that we need as a ministry, as a church, Lord God, to carry out the mission, which is to go to the nations and make disciples. Lord, remove the unbelief. Remove the hardness of heart. Remove, Lord God, the doubt and the fear from our hearts, Lord God, because we know that it is not by our own strength, it is not by our own might, but it is by your Spirit, says the Lord. It is by you that we do all things. It is through you. It is you who does it through each and every one of us. It is your power. It is your word. It is your name. It is your kingdom. It is you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for a change. We cry out for a change. In Jesus' name, Father God. We just pray, Father God. And we ask for that mantle, Lord God. A mantle to be released. A prophetic the apostolic, evangelistic, the one of a teacher and the one of a pastor. Those mantles to be released, that these gifts may rise up within us as well. That the men will rise up, Lord God. That the women will rise up. That the children, the youth will rise up, Lord God, with ideas, with initiatives, with ways of taking the gospel to those that are in need. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for today, Lord God, that you may bless every single one of us. Father, it's a new year. But Lord, we want to embrace all that you have for us this new year. We make it our priority, Lord God, to be discipled so that we can disciple others. In Jesus' name, Father God, we thank you and we give you all the praise. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Part of my desire today was to give prophetic words to, to whoever wanted one. And if you'd like to receive a prophetic word today, Come talk to me. Come talk to Nick. We would love to pray for you and give you a prophetic word and allow for the Lord to speak to you and to what he wants for you in your life this year. Amen. I know Ramon wants to say a couple of words. Ah, yo recibí esta palabra. I received this word y es para esta congregación. Esta iglesia siempre ha sido profética. This church has always been prophetic. Pero el Señor dice But the Lord is saying que ha agregado that he's added la, el ministerio evangelístico. He's brought in the evangelistic ministry. Entonces dice Reinhard, Reinhard yo te envío hoy I send you today juntamente con toda la iglesia all of the church, con los hombres y mujeres men y familias here, niños children, mujeres women, los envío I send you a predicar las buenas nuevas the good news, predicar que el reino de los cielos se ha acercado the of is at hand, a sanar a los enfermos to heal the sick, 
a echar fuera demonios cast out demons y asistir a los pobres to help the poor a predicar el evangelio to de preach the gospel eso es lo que viene de hoy en adelante today is what the Lord is saying to you today from this day forward I'm sending all of you es el tiempo it is my de levantar time. la cosecha it is the time to gather the harvest y todos somos comisionados a ellos we are all being entrusted with this commission esa palabra viene para this ti word is for you juntamente con toda la congregación today. y quiero orar And I want to pray to Padre en el nombre de Jesús Father, in the name of Jesus, yo creo en esa palabra I believe in this word que tú pusiste en mi mente y en mi corazón me in my, today in my heart. por lo tanto For which, en tu nombre in your name, Jesus, envío a Reinhard I sent Reinhard, envío a Nick, I sent Nick envío a cada uno de los hermanos every single one of the brethren here a predicar tu palabra to preach your word en todos lados en el norte, en el sur, en el este en el oeste lejos y cerca pero tu palabra correrá como tu espíritu está corriendo por toda esta nación especialmente en esta parte de, de la ciudad de Bon en el nombre de Jesús Amén Come on, let's give glory to the Lord Amen. I want to tell you a couple of things before we close up. We're working on a new platform to do discipleship, not only through the home rooms in this place, but only also through do it online. We're gathering all these videos so that you can be discipled and learn stuff from home and go through these teachings that will help you so much tremendously. This is, we're going to use technology. This will be a church that will not be limited by these four walls. It will be a church that will be based on technology. We will have the channel. People are watching online. People are embracing what we have to give. More invitations are coming for us to travel. In fact, this week, we have to travel to Texas for three days. We'll be back on Saturday. The meetings will go continue as normal. But I want you to know that God is doing something special. Do not be deceived it's just because we have maybe 60, 70 people here that we're not having an impact because we are having an impact. Many will come. Thousands will come. And they will hear God's word. And they will receive what God has given to us. But we do our part. Use what God has given you. Your wisdom, your influence, your platform. And make a difference in someone's life. Amen. Arlena, please. I know she has a word too. Nick, if you have a word too, by all means. I know that we wanted to give words to everybody, but I know the time snack up on me, so. Pero decirles que yo sentí esa palabra de confirmación en Juan 4. John 4 que habla de la samaritana en el pozo y la tuve a través de esta semana y yo pensé quizá el Señor quiere que las mujeres evangelicemos entonces solo es una confirmación dice mira los campos que están listos para la siega amén amén So who's going to go? Hmm? Are we going to go? Are we going to take the gospel to someone today? Are we going to go? Come on. Don't ever think that God does not want to part of his plans. But you must make the decision today. I'm going. Are you coming? Are we going? Are you going? Are we going? Come on, let's go. All it takes is for you to share your story. And God does the rest. The Holy Spirit is the one that convinces the world of sin. It is not our job to do that. It is His job. We are just the voice that He uses. And He does the rest. Amen. God bless you guys. Good to have you here. Please stick around. We have some food for you. Let's welcome a guest. And again, if you would like a prophetic word, come talk to me, Nick, or anyone as well. We would love to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Amen.